Varanasi, a city older than history. In the words of the popular American author and humorist Mark Twain, Banaras is older than history, older than tradition, older even than legend, and looks twice as old as all of them put together. The eternal city of India. Call it Varanasi or Banaras or Kashi. By any name and by all means, Varanasi is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. This city is more so remarkable since its great contemporaries Beijing, Jerusalem and Athens have moved on and away from their ancient ways of life. On the other hand, the lanes and buildings of old Varanasi still ooze the ethos of ancient India. More than 3,000 years old, this city has been referred to by various travelers across time zones. From Huan Zhang of China to Mark Twain of America, everyone has attested to this great city being extremely old. and the center of religion. Education. And artistic activities. To this day, this city is significant from many angles. It is one of the most important pilgrim centers for Hindus, Buddhists and Jains. It is one of the seven sacred cities of Hindus. Famous for its muslin and silk fabric, ivory work, and sculptures. In fact, from faith, philosophy, and culture. Indian arts and crafts all have gained tremendously from this eminent city of India. City of Ghats of Varanasi and the first thing that flashes across your mind is the image of the numerous carts along the eastern bank of the river Ganges. There are more than hundred carts lined up here back to back. The religious and cultural life at Varanasi is closely associated with the river Ganges. So, a trip to these stepped embankments is a must if you wish to feel the pulse of the city. A boat ride.
wired across this six and a half kilometer crescent shaped stretch is the best way to glimpse life at Varanasi unraveling on the cards. Some 52 of them facing the river. The best time to take a boat ride is pre-dawn at about 4.30. When the first rays of the sun fall on the carts, there is already a humdrum of activity along the banks. The sunlit carts exude radiance, glowing against the exhilarating blue sky of dawn. The multitude of devotees are already busy performing rituals and Surya Namaskar. Many can be seen taking a dip in the ice-cold waters of the Holy River to absolve themselves of all sins. Most of the carts are bathing carts, with a few serving as cremation grounds. However, against this religious background is the incongruous sight of spirituality being sold. Shops with so-called religious paraphernalia. Touts roaming around in the garb of priests, despoiling the very soul of the city. Another very disheartening sight is the filth apparent all around, polluting these historic carts. It is indeed sad that such a beautiful sight is so lacking in basic maintenance. into sharp focus at Varanasi. On the one hand are the carts abuzz with life. On the other, the blazing pyres, a mute testimony to death. Indeed, Varanasi is a melting pot where life and death come together. According to Hindu mythology, the entire city of Kashi is supposed to be a cremation ground. It is the belief of Hindus that dying at this holy city of Lord Shiva and the Ganges will free them from the cycle of death and rebirth. And it 
is for this reason that many widows and elderly come to Varanasi to spend their last few days of life and die here in peace. As many as 5 million Hindus frequent these ghats every year. At the southernmost end is the Asi Ghat. It is here that the river Ganges joins the river Asi. Just around the corner is the campus of Banaras Hindu University. The next Ghat, which is the Tulsi Ghat, is named after the great Hindi poet of the 16th century, Tulsidas. It is believed that Tulsidas wrote his greatest literary work, Ram Charitmanas, the story of the Hindu god Lord Rama, at this Ghat. At the foot of Janaki Ghat is the pumping station of the Varanasi waterworks. Bacharaj Ghat is of significant importance to the followers of Jainism. Shivala or Kali Ghat gets its name from the historic Shivala Fort here. The fort was inhabited by the Raja of Banaras in 1776. Harish Chandra Ghat, the next Ghat, is used for cremation purposes, being the second most important cremation Ghat after Manikaranika. The Kedar Ghat is a shrine for the Bengalis. The waters of the river flowing across Someshwar Ghat are believed to have curative properties for all diseases. Raja Ghat, which comes next, has a large inn for Brahmins. Rana Mahal Ghat other smaller bathing ghats that follow before one reaches the imposing Das Ashwamed Ghat. This is the main ghat of the city. Centrally located and the most popular among all the ghats. There is always a humdrum of activity taking place here. The most prominent feature of this cart is a sight of huge parasols with self-proclaimed holy men seated beneath them, making a rich living performing rituals. can be seen bobbing in the water alongside this cart, as this is where most of the tourists and visitors start their journey of the carts. The 
The famous Kashi Vishwanath temple is also situated near this ghat where one can hear the soulful and melodious Ganga Aarti take place every evening. <laughs> Thus, it is well worth visiting this ghat in the evening to partake of this soul-stirring experience when once again it comes alive with a teeming mass of humanity. Moving north towards the Das Ashwamedh ghat, one comes across some more spectacular ghats. The Man Mandir ghat built by Raja Man Singh in 1600. and the adjacent burning carts, the Jalasayin cart and the Manikaranika cart. Manikaranika cart, however, is the largest and the most prominent of all the burning carts, symbolic of both creation and destruction. However, one still finds a peaceful atmosphere pervading here. In the background, the magnificent temples of yore stand as mute testimony to the ancient and ethereal culture of the city. Once again, though, the sense of serenity is jarred by the sight of huge logs on sale serving the pyres at the gods. Further north, one comes across a finely carved temple which appears to be inclined and partially submerged in the river. This is the Sindhya Ghat, located next to the Manikarnika Ghat. It is said that this Shiva temple tilted and slid into the river about 150 years ago due to the weight of its construction though a popular legend supports another theory. The legend goes that a monk was sitting in meditation on the cart. When the king ordered its revamping, the saint refused to budge. The king tried to use force and thereby incurred the monk's wrath. The saint cursed the king that the construction at the cart would always stay incomplete. That is when the temple is believed to have tilted, a result of the monk's curse. Further north, the boat takes a U-turn at Rajghat. City of Temples As the boatman rows the boat, the rhythmic sound of oars lapping the calm river, water creates soothing music. A little further down, the sound of temple bells and conches blowing nearby bring into focus the ongoing activities in the numerous temples at the Ghats. Devotees are already lining up to offer prayers and one can only imagine the multitude of people as there are no less than 2,000 temples here. Thus, the reference to Varanasi as the city of temples. In fact, Varanasi is looked upon as the holiest city of the Hindus as well as being the religious capital of India. The city of lights, the city of learning. It draws millions of devotees, not only Hindus, but Buddhists and Jains also. For the Hindus, the most prominent of all temples is the Kashi Vishwanath temple dedicated to Lord Shiva. If the city of Varanasi is said to be the city of Lord Shiva, 
then the Kashi Vishwanath temple is truly its beating heart. The other Hindu temples of importance include the Sankat Mochan temple dedicated to the monkey god Lord Hanuman, and the Turga temple and Bharat Mata temple are located next to each other. The new Vishwanath temple is situated in the heart of Banaras Hindu University or BHU campus. This university is one of the largest residential universities in the world. At Sarnath, Buddhists converge from around the world to offer prayers. Sarnath is about 13 kilometers northeast of Varanasi and is one of the top four Buddhist pilgrimage shrines in the world. It is here that Lord Buddha gave his first sermon after becoming the enlightened one. This site now has a huge structure called the Dhamma Chakka Pavattana Sutta. The term means the setting in motion of the wheel of religion. Also located in this vicinity is an idol of Lord Buddha rendering sermons to four Buddhist monks. There is a fig tree here that is believed to be an offshoot of the original Bodhi tree under which Lord Buddha acquired true knowledge. Various countries which predominantly follow Buddhism have established individualistic temples and monasteries in Sarnath, depicting their own interpretations of Buddhism. Tibet, Thailand, Japan, Sri Lanka and Myanmar are some of these countries. Amongst these, the Japanese Buddhist temple deserves particular mention. The sleeping idol of Buddha inside the temple seems to be bathed in a golden hue. However, the emaciated depiction of the idol reveals the extreme austerity Lord Buddha exercised when in pursuit of true knowledge. It is said that when Lord Buddha was in an extremely weak state, a woman devotee offered him food. She implored Buddha to take care of his body in order to enjoy and spread the fruit of dharma. Buddha was, however, shunned by fellow Buddhist monks for accepting food from a woman. Ganga Aarti A trip to Varanasi is incomplete if you do not experience the sublime joy of the Ganga Aarti. Hindu prayer ritual that takes place every evening at the Das Ashwamedh Ghat after sunset. Crowds, however, start converging from around 5 o'clock. Hundreds of people, both local and from around India and the world, who come to the carts to witness the Aarti.
there seems to be festivity in the air. Though most people sit on the steps of the carts for the Aarti, there are many who partake of the experience sitting in boats, bobbing gently by the riverside. Vendors are busy selling flowers, incense sticks and tiny oil lamps. Center stage are tall, umbrella-like structures decorated with artificial flowers and strings of lights. Five, seven or nine raised platforms are set under each umbrella with all the paraphernalia required for the prayers. A group of young priests, similarly attired in cream, occupy the seats on each platform and then begins the Aarti, dedicated to worshipping Lord Shiva, River Ganges, the sun, fire, and the whole universe. Devotees also float small lamps on the river as they gather to witness the grand Ganga Aarti at the Khans. from these lamps casts an ethereal look over the river, silently flowing in the dark. At around 7 p.m., the Aarati finally begins with very well rehearsed and synchronized choreography. The priests stand up and start swinging to the tune of pre-recorded music on loudspeakers. They then begin clapping to the rhythm of the music. Conch shells are blown loudly to invoke the name of the river Ganges.
stop burned, incense sticks followed by dhoop.
turn of the multi-tiered lamps which the priests hold elegantly aloft and move about. formed with camphor.
huge gathering of people watches the entire proceeding in pin drop silence, as though in a spellbound trance. and the smoke emanating from the incense sticks and dhup add to the celestial atmosphere pervading the setting darkness with the beginning of Arati. The entire performance is a visual treat, more so with devotional emotions running high amongst the audience. Once the Arati is over, and if you happen to be at the riverside, it's time to take another boat ride. As you ride along, you cannot help but find yourself in a contemplative mood. The filth, the litter, the con men and the poverty all appear to fade into insignificance. There is something so serene and soothing pervading the air with emotions like fate and devotion so palpable. One wonders, is it only the spirituality that has woven this fine mesh, binding every facet of this remarkable city? Whatever the case may be, one cannot deny the irrefutable and lasting mark the city leaves. 